In this video, you're gonna learn how to convert any Python script into a Verity exe with a very simple process. Now, a big disclaimer, I am a huge fan of actually diving into the theory of the things instead of blindly following a guideline or shooting a do, so we're gonna talk about some theory first. If this is not brand new to you, you can use the timestamp below to navigate throughout this video. Now, before explaining how to convert Python into an exe, we need to know a little bit about computer science in general. There we have this thing called instructions, which are the basic execution time for moving the register, populating its value and so on. And this is pretty much how the CPU is going to handle a program and how it's going to execute it. These instructions are later translated into bits, which are O's and ones, which are sent to the CPU and then read and executed. Now we can write instructions with a language called assembly, and this is pretty much the lowest we can go when we are programming. Then there are languages like C, which are higher in level than assembly, but still quite low. And after C, we have a lot of higher level programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Python, and so on and so on and so on. Different programming languages may need specific environment such as JVM for Java, CLR for C Sharp and PyVM for Python. But no matter what the environment, it's always getting translated down the chain and eventually into instructions and eventually into bits with O's and ones. Since the C programming language is pretty much the lowest after assembly, a lot of programming languages and dedicated environments like JVM are actually translating its code into C on the very completion time. And speaking of completion, there are two types of programming languages. First, we have compiled and interpreted. Compiles are the one that needs to be compiled. So you pretty much write your code and then the code is getting read, compiled, and uh, pretty much file is outputted from this process, which you can execute. After you execute the file, it's executed one by one following the systematic approach. And then we have the interpreted languages. These are the languages which do not require completion, but they can be executed right off the bat. Such program is Python because you can, for instance, open a very simple notepad, write a simple print statement and just execute it with Python and pretty much nothing is compiled, it's just executed. Now, speaking of Python, it requires its own dedicated environment in order to operate properly and this environment is called PyVM. Don't worry, PyVM is pre-installed as soon as you install Python into your system, so you don't have to worry about this at all. So just install Python using the default installation process and you should be good to go. Now, the whole process of conversion between a Python script and an exe file is extremely complicated. It is because we need to transfer the high level language from Python into low level language like C with all of its imports and then compile with let's say GCC compilator. This is gonna give us really huge files because as mentioned, we need to translate all the imports as well, but luckily we don't have to do this manual. There are tools like Nuitka, which is pip3 library, which can help us do this process automatically and it's working right off the bat. Now I found Nuitka to be extremely easy to use, set up and from its alternatives quite stable. So let's give it a try. Alright, switching back to my command VM machine, I am on the official Nuitka GitHub page. From there, this is one important thing we need to pay attention and that's the requirements of this process. The requirements are, first, we're gonna need to have a C compiler, obviously, but it needs to support such versions. So it's best if you install it using Visual Studio 2022 and just set up your C++ development studio toolkit. Now, I already have this since I'm using command VM and the C compiler is already pre-installed there as well as the Python version and obviously you're gonna need python and nuitka currently supports python 2 version 2.6 2.7 and python 3 from 3.4 to 3.11 so if you have these versions of python and this version of c compiler you should be good to go now let's go on how to install nuitka and this is extremely sim simple if i go to the official web page of nuitka you can see it's enough to just do python and pip install nuitka and you should be good to go now in order to test all these things i've already installed it on my system so i can can open one folder in Visual Studio Code and create a very simple Python script. Let's call it print.py. From there, I'm gonna print a very simple statement. Let's say, please subscribe like that. And then let's try to shoot up Nuitka. If I do Python 3 or actually Python since I'm on Windows and specify print.py, I'm gonna give, of course, please subscribe because that's what the code is actually doing. But now let's try to convert it with Nuitka. So what I'm gonna do is try Python, actually Python again, sorry, and Nuitka. And this is gonna give me the menu of this library. So in that case, I need to specify only the file, which is print.py and give it a little bit of time. Now, keep in mind that as 
we are translating high level code into low level languages it's gonna take first a lot of time and you're gonna see how much time it takes just for one print statement and then the binary size will be huge again that's for the same reason because we need to transfer all the dependencies into a format which is low level and now it should be good to go it's why it was like uh, several seconds so it was now it's 13.34 but we started the process actually 17 seconds so around around half a minute for just a print statement which in my opinion it's a lot and if you try to convert a huge script it's gonna take a while but don't worry now the next thing you need to pay attention is actually i need to open export.exe into here and if you see the file size of the print.exe you can see it's 364 kilobytes that's super much for a single print statement imagine what that's gonna be if it's a, as i mentioned huge applications but we're gonna do a little bit of experiments to see the different file sizes and different functionalities but never mind let's try to execute it so if i do print.exe we can actually see please subscribe which indeed mimics the behavior of our code and also there's a file called print.cmd which again is a batch implementation which executes the print.txt so in theory if i run print.cmd i'm gonna again see the same output now the batch implementation is there because the environmental variable are set there and after all why not to have a batch file as well now with that being said let's try to do something more intriguing I'm pausing the video just to say massive, massive thanks to my Patreon sponsors. You have no idea how much that means to me. If you also have further appreciation to the channel, don't hesitate to become my Patreon, where you can get access to Shadowburn, my private packer, some hidden GitHub repositories, as well as special Discord membership from where you can actually request videos and blogs on specific topics. See you there and moving on. Now let's try to weaponize the code you already have. This project refshells.com is awesome because it's super easy to, to generate web shells. It is quite useful in such development scenarios as well as in some CTFs. All we need to do here is to specify the IP address of our server and then we have a shell for various languages. We can also go for bind, MS7 version, hoax shell also, but in this case I'm gonna keep it super simple. Now on the web shell I'm gonna go to my Kali machine and actually do ifconfig. From there I'm gonna get my IP address which is... I'm not sure why my mouse scroll is not working, never mind, which is 107. And from there, I'm just gonna need to paste the IP address like that. From there, let's just keep the port as usual. And now let's scroll a little bit down and find the code suitable for our needs. Since we're using Windows we and Python, we're gonna go for Python, but most of the things are designed to operate for our Linux machines, but we have specific dedicated snippets specially designed for Windows. And now if I copy that, and go to my Visual Studio code and actually make a new one because why not and let's type shell.py paste that and before moving into actually converting into an exe I just want to make sure it works like that so I can do oh sorry so I can do python there and just shell.py now if everything's all right and I set up my listener like nc mvlp 9001 I should be able to receive the shell in theory so I'm gonna save the file and execute in the console now the show hangs which means most likely we have some kind of connection and if i do let's say ls or who am i we see some kind of uh warnings let's say but after all it works just nice so i can do ip config and yeah it works right off the bat now this is good and now let's try to convert this into an exe so let's try the same process python dash m nuitka and without any arguments, specify shell.php. And now, if I don't do type, of course. Now, Nuitka. Yeah, like that. And now, let's wait a little bit. I'm going to pause the video because it's going to take more time. And as soon as that's finished, I'm going to be back. All right, now we're back. And as you can see, it finished around half a minute again. I believe that's because the simplicity of the shell. But that's not for matter now. What matters if, if that's gonna work? So my listener should be set up and ready. And now I can do shell.php. Actually shell. Sorry. Exe. Run it. And let's observe. We have a connection. Let's do who am I? And then it works. And even better because now we don't have any kind of warnings or any kind of error messages.
Okay, but now you may ask, what happens if I try to convert a Python script which uses nested libraries specifically designed for Python? For instance, Discord.py, which is a Python library designed to create and develop Discord bots. Well, let me show you. Alright, I am back on my command VM machine and here I developed a very very simple Discord bot application. This application is designed to just walk the bot in and then output the name of the bot. And if I do Python main.py, you can see that it's session ID now and the bot name is mythic bot. So far so good, but now I want to convert that into an exe. Now it's not that simple, but there's a flag that can help us with that. So I can do Python minus M, Nuitka and then main.py, come on, pi, but now include the flag minus minus follow minus imports. What this flag is gonna do is it's gonna read all the import statements that the Python script needs, in that case it's the library discord.py, convert all the code inside, and then combine them all together into one exe. Big disclaimer, this is gonna take a lot of time, so before running this command, make sure to grab a coffee. Now, after I run this command, because I've already done it and don't wanna wait 20 minutes more, as you can see, I've already have main.exe file up there, so I can try and execute it, main.exe, run it, and as you can see, we cannot distinguish between the two, it works quite the same, but one parameter we can distinguish on is based on the file size. So if I open explore here, we can see that the file name, <laughs> the file main.exe is actually 19,000 kilobytes, which is super huge for, for the 20 lines of code we have. Now, keep in mind that this is completely useful in so many cases. I personally use Nuikta to convert a Python HTTP server into my client machine so I can upload or download files over HTTP slash S. I'm sure that you can find implementation on that. I leave that up to you. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.